Well, welcome back to Mates on Tour. Um, today, we're just gonna do a bit of a run through on what went wrong with the 80 up in Cape York and how we got home and sort of, yeah, what's going on at the moment with it all. But um, firstly, I'd just like to say a big thank you to everyone who's subscribed and watched the first video. It's actually, um, yeah, gone way above my expectations of what I was sort of hoping for with the first video. So th thank you very much for everyone for sharing it around. It's just sick. Um, and also, apologies for the road noise, as you're probably about to hear, like, now-ish. Um, I filmed all this before, and we went out on the weekend for wheel driving, and I accidentally deleted all the footage. So I'm trying to do it in my shed, but I live on the main road, and it's after work on a Friday, so some of the boys like to rip past. Um, so you may hear some cars in the background, but that's fine. Let's get into it. So, to start this off, a little bit of a backstory uh, for people who haven't been following like living 4 by 4 and stuff a while ago. Um, pretty much went to the high country. Uh, we had an incident <laughs> where we basically drowned the motor and hydro locked itself and it was just a complete, complete stuff up basically. Um, it's just no good. So the engine has been rebuilt. It got rebuilt through Norfolk engines. Um, that's just, I didn't really pick who it went through, that's just who it went through because it was half of it was for insurance and stuff like that. So, anyway, got that done. Um, then leading up to the Cape York, York trip, the week before, the, or two weeks before, the head gasket decided to let go. Um, and we, my mechanic, he sort of untorqued them, I guess you'd say, so you can measure the torque rating of when they were undone. And there's certain steps in doing up head gaskets and stuff like that. And sort of like you go up to a certain tension, back it off, back up. There's, I think there's three steps. And by the looks of it, they've only done the two steps. Um, so everything was loose, which was great. But that was fine. We got it all fixed. Fixed it. Got it back on Friday. Left Friday night. Literally drove it from the mechanics. Put the canopy on. Left. Um, anyway, fast forward. We're up there having a great time done about three to four thousand k's or something like that and I literally turned the key to my car um, we were just went down at look checking out a creek crossing gone yep that's sweet can't turn the key engine just destroys itself like out, <laughs> out of nowhere I couldn't believe it and first thing that goes through your head is we are so far from home we are in the middle of the telegraph track we are by ourselves and the car just had some sort of major breakdown. I have no idea what the hell has just, <laughs> just happened. Um, very luckily for us, the group behind us caught up within like the first five minutes. They turned out to be mechanics. <laughs> um, they pulled the rocket cover off. They pulled out some broken uh, valve shims and stuff like that. Um, we tried to try and run the car. It would turn on. It sounded horrible and terrible noises and all that but yeah it wouldn't didn't have I think it was they didn't have enough compression or something like that to drive so as soon as you started to try the drive it just stalled out it wouldn't work so luckily for us a lovely couple um, Dale and Justine they um, basically hooked hooked my snatch strap up towed us out of the telegraph track back onto the dirt road we drove for it was like two hours or two and a half hours or something stupid get towed all the way back to Brownwell station um, yeah, but just having people like that is just amazing because there is no possible way we're getting out of that situation without someone actually helping us out somehow, whether it was getting on a sat phone and calling someone to come get us. I don't know how else we would have done it, but that was probably the best option that we had. So massive, massive shout out to them. They're just absolute legends. Um, and I hope I can pay it forward somehow, some way to someone else along the lines of things. Because we've been helped out a lot. Seems to be every time we go out by ourselves on a big trip, something bad happens and we just get stranded. But anyway, from there, you go, oh my God, we're still in Cape York. We're from Victoria. What the hell are we gonna do? So I called, I called on Instagram the only person I knew who had an 80 series that just broke down in Cape York. And that is Bailey from Maverick Campus. This was a while ago. I called him on Instagram with like very minimal service. Um, he was sort of just enough service to communicate to, I was like, I don't know 
where's, where's the mechanic? Who do you go to? Um, he suggested to try and get onto off the wall 4x4 down in Cairns. Called, called them, got onto them. Absolutely awesome place. Um, they were awesome. They pretty much said, like, if you can get the car here, we'll get ahead, we'll get it on the car, you can head back up there, or you can do Fraser on the way home or something, like, we'll be able to get it, we'll get it in, we'll get it sorted. Um, which I was leaning towards, but then getting some more information, it sort of sounded like it was going to be a bit more than just the head. Because without pulling it apart, you don't really know what's going on. It sort of started to sound like it could be pistons and all that, which isn't that's going to blow out the time frame of trying to get this car back on the road. So made the call to get it shipped all the way home, um, which was sort of our best option. Now, getting a car home from out there is an, I don't know, it's, a, it's just a stupidly far way, <laughs> way away. I think it was about three and a half thousand Ks from where we were. Um, so, but luckily, for me and many other people around who are smart people who have it, I have RACV Total Care, which I know it's gonna sound like a big ad all of a sudden, but <laughs> it's not. It is like two, I think I paid the other day, it's $250 a year. It is incredible. It is the best thing I've ever invested in. I've used it so many times, it's ridiculous. But everyone should get it, whether it's RACQ, Roadside Assist, I think they call it something else out there. There's, anyway, you need to figure it out and get on it. Because if you have a major breakdown and your car cannot be fixed within three working days, they will transport your car from wherever you are in the country all the way home. So, for free. I know, that doesn't make sense, but they will. And they get you home for, for pretty much free as well. So, that took a lot of stress out of it. There's still a bit of stress involved, like getting the car places. Um, they took us on a tow truck from there to Weeper, we had some accommodation there, which they were paying for as well. The car had to get inspected and blah, 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 blah. But the car went on three or four tow trucks and then all the way to my house, which was awesome. Um, getting us home, there's sort of an allowance of a budget. They sort of allow you to spend $2,400. It comes out of your own pocket first. I think, you, I think they can organize it, but it's just way easier to organize it yourself. So you get a budget about $2,400 to get back. I think we went the tiniest bit over. That's like accommodation, flights. Um, if you hire a car, you get a taxi. If there's any mode of transport that you need to pay for on the way, as long as you have a receipt at the end. And then we sent all the receipts back. Um, it does take a while to get through. I don't know if they're just like way more busy at the moment. They seem really busy, but it probably took about or oh, eight weeks to get like my refund of money, which doesn't. Doesn't really matter because we got all the way back. I think the whole, whole thing cost $60. And it took about seven weeks, I think, for the car to come all the way home. Um, so yeah, all in all, it, like, it was terrible that it happened, but without paying that $250 for the year, um, it would have been an absolute disaster. It was already stressful as it was, but this is, yeah, it just makes, takes, I wouldn't say it takes all the stress out of it, just takes the main stress out of it. Knowing you can get your car back and yourselves back and it's not going to really take any money out of your own pocket is great. So, it's back home. Uh, from there, I get it booked in at um, this like, guy that specialises in doing heads. Take it down there in a few weeks time after I get it back. So there's a lot of, there's, there's a lot of time involved in this. I think we're... It's like, five months since this first all happened right now. So I get it in there, um, they pull it all apart, realize it's got a cracked head, which isn't good, <laughs> but there seems to be nothing else wrong with the block, with the pistons or anything, everything else, else is flat. And I was like, sweet, this is cool, we can get all this sorted. Um, but then it came down to, he didn't, he didn't know, he, none of his suppliers could find a head, or like, no one had a head sort of thing after market. But turns out, you can just call Toyota. I just called Toyota down Lourdes, the local Toyota down here. Got brand new heads for one HDTs. Just chilling. I had it within two days. So I got that, picked it up, took it down there. Whole like valve shims, um, springs, anything in the head. It was all, all completely new basically. Because there was a lot of things wrong, sort of stuff that you would have expected getting a fully engine rebuilt engine should have probably been replaced like there was just 
I don't actually know what the hell it really was, but there was a lot of sort of just brackets and stuff that were just worn out really bad. And he's like, your timing belt would have been like, the time belt tensioner would have been like moving a little bit. And he's like, this part, look at that, it's all worn out. Like that shouldn't, that should never go on back on the car and stuff like that. So yeah, that was a little annoying, but I was like, whatever, we've got it all sorted. Get it home. And within 150 Ks, I noticed that it's pumping coolant back out the overflow, which I'm just like, what the hell is going on? So this, this car is just doing me an absolute nightmare. Um, and then I basically put it in the, put it out the back, leave it out on the lawn and just look at it. The grass grows around it for a couple of weeks. Um, and then go fix the boat, just to distract myself with the boat, which that's coming up really soon, it's behind me. It's actually gonna, I've just finished editing it the other night. It's a freaking sick episode. <laughs> I loved it. So get the boat going, but then it comes down to, I can't tow my boat without my car. Cause this is actually my only car. I don't have a spare car. Luckily for me, my family has sort of like a communal spare car that we get to borrow. Um, without that, I would be absolutely screwed. So, Anyway, decide we've got to get this car back on the road. I get, um, Darvis's dad comes around and he has a look at it and he's like, mate, this thing's not actually done a head gasket. Like there's no bubbles coming out, up out of the radio, ra radio, whatever, <laughs> radiator. Um, so he's like, you might just have an airlock in it. Just drive it and see if it comes out or just, you need to do a bit more investigation before you go getting the head gasket replaced again. So. Do a bit more investigating, driving it, whatever. Turns out, it was a $12 radiator cap. Yep. <laughs> so, that was a massive relief. So I put, put that on. The reason no one else really picked up on that is just prior to the trip when the head gasket went the first time, um, I thought it was just the radiator, so I took it to the radiator joint. It got full flush, new cap, everything, got the whole works done. Anything you could do to a radiator got sort of done. So that's what I've been telling all the experts who actually know what they're talking about. I'm like, the radiator's sweet. Cap's sweet. Turns out, the brand new cap, not sweet. <laughs> um, so yeah, changed that. And it seemed all good. Seemed fine. We put the treps on the other day. We went out um, to Labertouche and hit up some pretty cool tracks out there after a massive storm. Caught, kind of caught us off guard. <laughs> um, it was just a lot wetter than we sort of thought it was gonna be in some sections. So we got the treps on, going up this hill, and then I get get bogged, because the mud's just insane. Um, having some other problems with the car, the diff whatever. <laughs> Not making excuses, even though it sounds like I am making excuses, I am. I need to cut that out. Anyway, Brad comes up to the window, and he's like, you're not gonna like this, but there's cool water pissing out of your car real bad. So from then on, take it real easy, get it home. Um, and yeah, now it's seems to not be pumping coolant out now. Um, I thought I had it all sorted. It's sort of the engine temps, the water temps are sort of slightly higher. It normally just gets to 80 and just stays at 80. It's happy. You can like flog the crap out of it and it would be sort of like eight, 85 degrees. But now it's just sort of fluctuating between 80 and 90, which I know is still not, still isn't hot, but just cruising around. I haven't had that before. So, I don't know. I've got to tow a trailer about an hour tomorrow, so that's going to be my big test to see <laughs> if it works or not. But that's basically where we're at. And yeah, um, I sp yeah, the most, I suppose the most common thing is people just think there's going to be some sort of warranty on this. There's, there's not, <laughs> unfortunately. I called up the engine builders and he, I don't know, didn't, he wasn't the nicest bloke to talk to, to be honest. They basically said, we never wanted this effing job, blah, blah, all this stuff, it doesn't effing work for me anymore. I'm like, I don't really care. I just literally just called you up to ask, like, I want your opinion on it. I'm not accusing you or anything. All I want to do is get this thing fixed so and sorted so I can use it. Because like a lot of people who are probably watching, your full drive is your absolute baby and this is like, yeah, this is mine. I spend way too much money on it, way too much time. Um, it's sort of my mental health relief when this is going. When it's not work, working, I'm not very fun to be around. 
So that was a bit disappointing. I know there's sort of like, there is a loophole. It's not, not a loophole, but I didn't realize at the time that if you, I know this is gonna sound stupid. I'm probably gonna get stupid comments and whatever. But they're saying because it's been tuned, you can't claim warranty, which is fair enough. But when I was getting it done, they were like, mate, this thing is good for 35 PSI, 40 PSI, like easy. Like there's not gonna be any dramas with this. It runs to like 20. And I said that to the bloke and he's like, no, nah, no, nah, you can't, you can't boost them at all. You go any more than stock PSI, you're gonna blow it up. And he's like, we, ne they never sh we never should have sold you that engine. I'm like, well, why? Why did you? <laughs> Um, so where do I go from here? I don't really know. I know that he's not right by saying that you can't tune um, these old engines because I know you can. I don't want to push the extreme. I just literally, all I want to do is tow. I just want to tow my boat. That's all I want to do. Um, I feel like I'm rambling on a bit now, so I'm just going <laughs> to cut it off here. But that is the update on the 80. Um, basically, hopefully we just get this coolant thing sorted and then just be fine. Just want to, yeah, hook the boat up and go basically. Get, get out there. I think my camera just died. That was sort of good timing. That one, that one's going. Anyway, thank you all for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you guys there. What the hell happened to this?